In today's video, we are going to be talking about things that Elegant Themes can do to improve Divi. Because right now, I think it's lagging behind and it really needs to catch up. So let's start off with the first thing. But before we do that, I'd like to remind you that if you purchase Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to the Divi Blueprint course. This is a course that teaches you how to be proficient in Divi. Saving you hours of searching online on how to use Divi. All right, so let's start off with the first thing. And I think the color management in Divi is really, really bad and very confusing, especially for beginners. So let's take a look and see uh, what I mean. So over here, I'm in theme options. So this is where you would go in and set your colors. So you can just click over here. And these are the colors that pretty much follow your color palette. Right, so once you set these up, pretty much you are good to go. So let's save this. Now, when you start designing your site, you're going to notice that this color palette here is now updated right here. Now, what really I find very uh, confusing or maybe something that may be confusing for a lot of uh, designers is we also have this global option here. And this, in my opinion, is a mess because it's quite difficult to use. Because if you change a color here, it changes across the whole website. And to use this, you have to go into uh, this particular color here, update it. Now you can see here I've chosen this. So now you have to click on this arrow and then click on that to update it. And that color now has been updated across the whole website. But what if you could do this in the theme builder? Because that seems to be the perfect place to go in and set up all your colors, fonts, and pretty much everything. Now, where is the theme builder? Let me show you where that is. So to head over to the theme builder, you need to uh, go back over here to your dashboard. Now notice what I have to do to go to the theme builder. I've now left the normal builder. I'm going now to the theme builder. So here we are, you're gonna to go to appearance, customize. And what you're also going to notice is we also have colors here. Look at this, we have color schemes. So we have default, so we have green, orange, pink. I mean, this, it doesn't work, guys. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know um, how this can be really the way to work in Divi because you have color schemes here and this seems to be changing only the titles and the uh, buttons. So normally when I design, I just totally ignore this completely. But what I'm saying is if Divi had options here where they can set the color, the colors, the fonts and everything. Now again, talking about the fonts, you're going to notice that they are also over here on general settings. You have typography. Now we also have more colors here. We have body link color. We also have text color and so on. However, even though we have these colors here, we can also add presets and that will work pretty much in a similar way. But what I'm saying is, why are we having this in different places? So in the future, I would like to see this updated. Now here we also have an option for changing your body font. So if you choose your font here, you can choose, like in my case, my favorite one is Poppins. I can just come over here, search for it. Now, what I don't like with this is there is no preview. Right, I can't really see what the font looks like, so I just have to go to a font that I definitely know. So in this case, I'm looking for Poppins, and here it is. Now you can see here, it updates. Now, if you also use presets, you can achieve the same thing. You can go in here, um, choose your color, I mean, choose your uh, font, and save it as a preset, and that applies across the whole website. Now, this brings me to the next part. If we have presets, now let me just open up a brand new page here. If we have presets, why do we have the option for global settings? Maybe guys, you can help me by adding this in the comments box below so that at least uh, I might be missing something or maybe it's a different way that you use this. Now, what I mean by that is if you come over here, you're going to notice that we have a few options. So let's say I add, let me just add a bunch of text in here. So I'm gonna go for my text module and select it. Right, so I have my uh, text here. So what I could do, I could come over here to the top and save this as a preset. And that does the same thing as the theme builder. But check this out. There's also something which you are going to find in here. Now, if I come over here, if I click on save module to library, there's an option to save as global. You see it here. <laughs> I missed it for a moment. Uh, you also have this on uh, pretty much every uh, module. So you can save this as a global. So why are we saving it as a global if the presets are applying globally across the whole website? So as you can see, these are those things that I think should be consolidated so that we have one way that DV actually works. Now, this leads me to back to the color that I mentioned. Imagine if we had an option in the theme builder 
where we have AI and you feed the AI with the type of website you want to design and it gives you maybe four or five options of colors that you can use in the whole design. That would be awesome. I don't think there's any page builders right now that have that option where you can choose AI colors. But anyway, let's move on to the next part. So the next thing I want to talk about is the DV library. I mean, pff, to be honest, I don't even use the library because um, it actually slows down my workflow. Let's say I want to save this button here to the library. I'll just click over here and then I can say, give this module a name. You can either save it to cloud, but you can also save it to the library. You can see the option save for library is here. Now, when you go to the library, things are not very pretty. Now, let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard here, discard and exit. So when I come over here, we notice that we have our DV library right here. So you can see here, we have rounded button, we have featured, we have hello section. The problem I have with this is there's no preview. If I really wanna work fast, I wanna have to look at these buttons here or my, my image, or whatever it is, as a preview for me to continue, similar to how they have it in Divi Cloud, because Divi Cloud is fantastic. It has all the previews you can see, you know, pretty much what you are uh, looking at and what you can add and use. But with this, there's no option. Of course, we can click here on edit, and this takes us into the builder, but it's an extra step that I think is very unnecessary. And once you come here, again, it's quite confusing. We can say build on the front end, and it can show us what the button looks like, but these are extra steps that we have to click in order for us to achieve something so basic. So all in all, I think the library should have a revamp and this should work in a much, much better way. Okay, let's move on. In fact, you know what? While we're talking about the library, I would like to see an option here where you can package a whole website, similar to what Elementor does. And I think this is a very, very good option. And this could be something that may benefit the uh, marketplace because if you can package your whole website and anyone who uses Divi just installs it, just like how we do, uh, how we install the designs, that would be really awesome because now customers are purchasing a complete functioning website where if there could be an option for adding your plugins as well, I think this will be awesome. So that's something that I think is lacking in Divi at the moment. That'll be a really, really cool feature. Now, let's talk about pre-designed layouts. <laughs> so with pre-designed layouts, I think we are better off if we have wireframe. Now, the reason why I say that is because with these um, pre-designed layouts, there are just so many of them, but really it's just different layouts because any website in these um, pre-designed uh, pre layouts can be turned into any type of website really by changing images and the text. So it, in fact, for those of you that uh, don't use pre-made layouts, let me just show you what they look like. So this is what I mean. So let's say we have this uh, tree farm, right? And I choose this layout. I just wanna show you how this website can be changed into pretty much any type of website by changing images. So really we are having hundreds, thousands of these designs, but really and truly, we just need some really decent wireframes where we can just, you know, import it. Maybe it's a hero area. We use that, change our images, and pretty much we are good to go, right? All these designs for new, uh, for new designers, they can be very confusing because if you saw a layout in here, which is, a for, uh, which is for a construction website, you probably think, okay, this is only for a construction website and I can't do anything else with it. And that's not, the, uh, that's not the case. So here we can go into our design, go to our background, and we can completely change this image altogether. Perhaps maybe even, even add a color or a gradient, right? Because it is not really um, the image that detects, I mean, it's really the image that detects what type of website is it, uh, it is. So even in here, I can go in and change all these Christmas trees and so on. And already in a few seconds, this now becomes any other website that I decide uh, it needs to be. So I think more effort needs to be added onto creating wireframes, which then can be imported easily to build up your website. All right, so let's move on to the builder itself. Now, I know this has been addressed. Nick has mentioned this before. This builder is slow. I mean, it's once you start using Elementor or Bricks Builder, I mean, in fact, Bricks is super fast. It's so snappy, it's unbelievable. But I think uh, Elegant Themes is going to achieve that in uh, DV5. I've seen some previews and in fact, Nick has mentioned it. So I don't think I should hit um, very hard on that because it's something that's being uh, talked about. 
Now, there's, a, there's also an area here which I think should pretty much just go away. And that is the wireframe mode. So I don't know if uh, any one of you guys still use the wireframe mode. Let me know in the comments box below. But I haven't used this for a very long time because the visual builder is, you know, very exciting to use. So here's the wireframe mode. This is what it looks like. Again, it doesn't really, it doesn't really do much. I mean, look, look at this. I mean, what, what, what am I even looking at here? <laughs> what am I designing? Yeah, I know there are some instances where you want to really target something here so you can just move it like that. But no. Let me show you even a better way to use uh, to use this. If you come over here to layers, now you can see now this is a, a much better way of working. So let me just close this so you can see pretty much it's the same thing. We have our header here, our products, testimonials, FAQs. So if we collapse this, we notice now that this is where we have all our items that we need to work with. But with this, pretty much we have this and there's more clicking. So I can just go directly to the item I need to work on here. So I think this is a duplication and this looks much better anyways. So if this was to go away, I think that'll be much better. And also, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a developer, so I would think that the code that was used to generate the wireframe, <laughs> the wireframe mode, if that goes away, maybe that makes DV a bit lightweight. You know, less code, obviously, the better. Now, let's talk about um, the design itself. Now... There are ways to design websites and we cannot talk about design without talking about Flexbox. Flexbox is super important for designing our websites. And at the moment, the way we are designing uh, in elegant themes, I mean in Divi, is really, really dated. I mean, if you take a look here, I mean, this is all we have in terms of the layers. I mean, the layouts. So we are, we are restricted so much. In fact, I've had to do some code. If you go to dvuniversity.com forward slash Flexbox. In fact, let me just show you this. Uh, this is where you can get this uh, Flexbox code, which you can use on your websites. But even though this is a, um, a fix, it's still not you know, the right way to work. It's still confusing for a lot of people. But of course, if you want to play around with this, that's also an option that you can, you know, you can use. So Flexbox and CSS Grid definitely has to be on the table when it comes to us working effectively with Divi. Now, in my opinion, you know, okay, in fact, this is the code here. You can see if you want to copy display flex, you can just click here on copy. Now it has copied the code and then you can just copy your code here as you are designing your website. So you can see we have all the Flexbox codes to help you design using Flexbox. In fact, I've done a video. I will show you, uh, in fact, I'll link it so that you can see it and see how you can use Flexbox in your design. It's actually quite fun and even more uh, flexible. And the pages will have less code because we've done away with columns and sections, you know, because that's really extra code as you're designing your websites. All right, so the other thing I want to talk about is integrations with other plugins. As we all know, whatever page builder you use, uh, these page builders don't really uh, bring a lot of functionality. They bring um, character and design to the main layout, which I uh, like to call the foundation. But when it comes to functionality, this is where now you need extra plugins. Like for example, you want to do list building, you want to use uh, Fluent Forms. If you want to do email marketing automation, you can use Fluent CRM. So the way Divi integrates with uh, all these external plugins at the moment is hit and miss. Sometimes they don't integrate very well, so you just have to just try and hack it to work. But if you look at how Elementor has integrated with all these other plugins, it is super, super amazing. So in the future, if uh, Divi can have that, but I'm sure they've talked about um, about linking, uh, I mean, uh, giving away the uh, API code to developers so they can uh, design plugins that work well with Divi. So that could be uh, a very good starting point. So yeah, it's been talked about and I hope that that's gonna be added. Now, in my opinion, page builders still have a place in the market because the way or where WordPress is going is getting even more and more complicated with these block themes and uh, the block way of doing things. Even, even me, I used to have uh, this passion of working with uh, the native uh, WordPress, but uh, it hasn't been very exciting, you know, design workflow. So this is where page builders come in. If they come in with a page builder that is fast, easy to use, then that's really awesome. So in all these things that I've mentioned, I hope that uh, they can pick up a few of these things and you know add them to the builder to make it super awesome. I still have faith in uh, in Divi. I still use it. I'm not saying these things because 
I don't, uh, I'm saying let's stop using Divi. No, I'm saying these are the sort of things that they, they need to look at as they are working with uh, the new versions of Divi. Anyway, I'm keen to, to hear what you guys think about uh, the items that I've spoken about and yeah, your thoughts as well on how Divi can be. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.